Hi guys, in this video I will show you how you can make yourself a cool looking code sculptor game which I am playing right now. The game is known as Bounce and as the name suggests you need to bounce this blue ball on the yellow paddle and each time you bounce the ball the score gets incremented by 1. At the top right corner of the screen you can see that the high score is also maintained. So it's a pretty fun game to play and pretty challenging as well and I've got a high score of 25 so see if you can beat that. So let's see how we can make this game in Code Sculptor. So here's the Code Sculptor code you can see it it is about uh, 100 lines. So first we import the simple GUI and the random library and then we declare some global variables to be used within the code and then we have some functions like spawn ball, new game and event handlers like draw and uh, and key down and key up event handlers and then we simply create the frame and start the frame so let's first find out what the game is all about we have a ball and we have a paddle so ball bounces up and down on the paddle and the ball itself uh, is governed by its position and which in turn depends upon the velocity and the velocity in turns driven depends upon the gravity. So we have a gravity variable and that we assign that to velocity and velocity in turn controls the position of the ball. So let's take a sneak peek at the code and I'll give you a walkthrough of what's happening within the code. So first we initialize the width and height which corresponds to width of and height of canvas then the radius score and some pretty self-explanatory variables and then the gravity variable which pulls the ball down and then we have the ball velocity which is actually a list and so gravity variable is added to the ball velocity y direction uh, to get the ball to move in the y direction to get the ball and move to move in the x direction we have the drift and we have the pad width with which we can change the paddle then we have the high score variable. So let's take a look at the code. At the start of frame we call the new game function. So let's see what new game function does for us. It initializes the score to zero and then it calls the spawn ball function. So what does the spawn ball function do? Uh, we are declaring the use of some global variables and then we assign the ball position. Then we initialize the ball position. Uh, to width by 2. So what is width? It is the width of canvas divided by 2 in the x direction and 180 in the y. We initialize the gravity to 0.5 and give the ball a velocity or in x 0, 0 value and in y we also grant it a 0 value. And uh, then we define the drift variable. We use the function random.choice. Now you may have a question why we have used random.choice and not random.randrange. The random.choice chooses among these values and if we choose random.randrange we would have to use int values like 1, 2 and that would provide too much momentum in the x direction. So we have used random.randchoice which arbitrarily selects among these values. So after that we have also chosen uh, the paddle position to be a 360 and after that we have initialized all the values we call next we uh, go down and we see that we have created the frame with frame.start and as you can see at the starting of the frame we will call the draw function and in the draw function we create the ball and the paddle that we are going to use within the code. So you can see below that uh, we are creating the frame using simple GUI dot create frame and we create the frame using the width and the height that we have initialized in the global variables. And then we what we have done is we have set a draw handler, a key down handler and a key up handler. And with these are used within the game. So first we will talk about the draw handler. We first draw the ball and draw the polygon which acts as a paddle and the polygon, polygon uses the paddle pause variable which is defined as width by 2 so effectively it's a two, 200 value so after we have created these two we update continuously update the pad paddles horizontal position uh, by adding the 
parallel velocity to the horizontal position notice that I have already told you about this you can see that the position of the ball is depends upon the velocity so this is, is demonstrated using this line of code so after we have done this uh, we call the update ball function which uh, in which the ball pause 0 notice that the ball pause was a list 0 denotes horizontal and 1 denotes vertical direction so when we say that ball pause 0 plus equals ball underscore velocity 0 we add the ball velocity in the horizontal direction to the ball current ball position and similarly the ball velocity in vertical direction gets added to the horizontal position of the ball so to the next we have used assigned added the drift variable which is as you can see random dot choice which chooses among these values and we add that to the velocity so as i said that in the x direction the drift is added to velocity and the velocity in turn governs the position of the ball uh, so this is about the horizontal direction in the vertical direction the, uh, we add the gravity to the veloc vertical velocity and you can see gravity is initialized to 0.5 and the gravity which in turn controls velocity and the velocity is added to position and in this way the position governs the position of the paddle on the canvas so after we have done this initialization bit of code what we do is we test whether the ball touches or collides with the paddle so how we do this is that we check whether the ball position and one represents in the vertical direction is equals 330 note that the paddle is at 330 pixels along the y direction so if that is equal next what we do is we check whether the ball pause zero which is the horizontal position of the ball if it is it between the parallel position between uh, as you can see i've highlighted the ball position zero if it is z between the parallel position and greater than the paddle position and less than the paddle pause pass width then the ball is between the paddle now the paddle pause is this location which is corresponds to starting of the paddle and paddle pause dot pad plus pad width is this location which corresponds to end of the paddle so if the horizontal position of ball is between these two locations we can safely say that the ball is able to bounce so what we do is we reverse the direction of the ball velocity variable so say that gravity was initialized to 0.5 and velocity at initialization is 0 and position is 0. So gravity is assigned to velocity and velocity in turn increments the position. Now say that the wall is near the paddle, uh, we velocity is about of 5. So, so as soon as the velocity reaches 5 and touches the paddle, we uh, convert its direction to the different direction in the y direction so what it does is that the velocity which was going towards plus y direction that is going below is now converted in up direction so the ball which is going down now starts bouncing up then we also define and give the ball a new drift which is random uh, velocity in the x direction and of course we increment the score next we discuss what happens when the ball bounces off the paddle and goes to the sides of the screen like you can see that the ball now goes to side of screen and bounces off on the right direction so here we take care of that code that when the ball goes out of bounds it returns back to the playing area so the horizontal position of ball denoted by ball zero we add that to the drift and if it is less than zero or we check if the ball position plus drift is greater than 800 note that these are bounding points of the box then we uh, we reverse the direction of ball velocity that is by multiplying it with minus one uh, so that the ball bounces back within the code and then we st if the ball is missed when the ball pause one note that one donates the vertical direction if that is greater than 400 note that 400 is the total height of the canvas so if the ball reaches there we can safely say that the ball was missed by the player so if it is greater than one so uh, then we check the score and if it's greater than high score uh, note that the high score variable is initialized with zero value initially so if that score is greater than the high score then we assign the score to the high score and then we start a new game by calling the new game function and then we simply draw the scores on the canvas using the draw text and draw text method and after that we discuss about the key down 
and the key up event handlers so you can see in the key down event handler we have used a local variable speed which we have assigned a value of 12 and then we have used the simple GUI dot key map uh, method and we are assigning the paddle velocity equivalent to speed uh, when the corresponding key is pressed this is relatively straightforward and you can see that when we play the game the left and right keys effectively control the direction of the movement of the ball within the code so the game is pretty fun to play and as you can see Let's see if you can beat a score of 25 in the game. And that